I mean, of course, there's a way that things are out there. Nobody's denying that. But all that we as human beings can ever hope to have access to is a set of cultural and scientific constructions that were created in an attempt to understand reality. What you refer to as the truth is really just the current, temporary, dominant narratives of your culture's way of making sense of things. Narratives that are constantly being redefined as they interact with other cultural discourses that interpret reality in a different way. The stability of identity and the terms people need to use to categorize themselves. The stability of any grand narrative that we've inherited from the past. See, because historically, these grand narratives have been the stable foundation thinkers have used to make truth claims. And what this has led to is that, historically, these grand narratives have been the points of unity that ideologies form around. The ideas that groups of people gather around and marginalize others on behalf of. This is why, in the work of all the postmodernists we've talked about so far, the name of the game in this new era has been deconstruction and fragmentation of these old inherited ideas. Because in the eyes of the post-structuralists, if you can fragment and deconstruct these grand narratives and show them to be not some ultimate theory of reality that's been arrived at, but instead just one of many incomplete, narrow ways of making sense of things that at best gives people a story to build their life around and at worst makes other people's lives in this world miserable, then that may be the first step we have towards not repeating a lot of the same mistakes we've made historically. Imagine two people in some sort of online dating situation where they've only communicated thus far through instant messaging. Let's call them John and Susie. Now, Susie, after talking for a while, asks John to send her a picture of himself so she can see who she's talking to. But John is 50 years old, and he knows that Susie is 25 years old. John is self-conscious about the fact that he's so much older than her, he really wants to keep talking to her. So he sends her a picture of himself from back when he was 25. Susie gets the picture and then continues talking to John. Now it's from this point forward that Susie begins to live in what's essentially an entirely new simulated reality. John has given Susie a piece of media that informs her understanding of the world, a picture. And that piece of media is not an accurate representation of reality, because it's 25 years old. But from Susie's point of view, she lives every day of her life after the fact, talking to John, believing that she's speaking to a 25-year-old person. Just as most people today live every day of their lives believing that the media they consume is them interfacing with reality. This is one of the primary points Baudrillard's making here. In our societies, we no longer make distinctions between representations of reality and reality itself. The representations become the real. And then the media creates representations of those representations, and I mean, once again, the whole process continues. Consider for a second just how much information the media makes available to us. Consider the sheer numbers of just how many possible worldviews you could subscribe to given the access to information we have. Within our simulation, you can be a Christian, a Democrat, a hardcore conspiracy theorist, and all of those positions are completely justifiable. Because we live in a world where at any instant, you can go to google.com, type in any statement you want to believe about the way the world is, and then be flooded with media making the case for you being right. Media that you can then use as the reputable evidence proving that you're right, and that everyone that fundamentally disagrees with you is a victim of fake news. This is a hallmark of this particular postmodern society that Baudrillard would have seen coming a mile away. When people can have no confidence in any sort of master narrative that explains the way that things are, and when you have unlimited access to media that'll justify any worldview you can imagine, in that world, all you can ever have are the visual images and sound bites delivered to you by a TV screen, programming into you meta narratives that you scream at people about by the water cooler. See, in the same way a lack of grand narratives creates a crisis of identity for people, this lack of grand narratives has also created a crisis of meaning. I mean, it used to be the case that to have completely different views of reality, we needed to be geographically distant from each other. But now that there is no master narrative practically everyone subscribes to, and we get our understanding of the world through whatever media we happen to consume, once again, in this particular postmodern world that's emerged, you can be sitting next to someone on the bus that's essentially living in a completely different world than you, because they frame everything that happens to them in terms of how it relates to a different set of media-generated narratives.